Welcome to the Dear Professor series, where college students who take courses online speak their minds. I am your host and e-learning strategist, Dr. Kelly Austin, who is honored to have a conversation with today's guest as she sheds light on her experiences as an online student. I've been teaching online since 2004 and made the tough decision to obtain my PhD through an online program. So I've been both an online instructor and an online student. As a result, I know that some wonderful things are happening with online programs, as well as some not so wonderful things going on. The purpose of this series is to help professors and students experience a more fulfilling online learning environment by allowing students to reveal their needs and pet peeves. I hope that this information will support professors in making the necessary changes or adjustments in the design and delivery of their online courses which should ultimately enhance student success and satisfaction with distance education. So if you're interested in hearing what students have to say about their lived experiences online, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every Wednesday at 8 p.m. the latest episode will come straight to you. Also feel free to comment about anything said and ask questions. If you're listening via a podcast platform, please be sure to follow and rate the series so that your interest and opinion of the show are made known. Well, it's the beginning of a new semester and I have one question for you. Have you ordered the Professor's Week in Review? It is a journal for weekly reflections on your higher ed experience. Listen, I know that the demands of academia coupled with the responsibilities while adulting may leave you feeling drained and static even though you're constantly going and going and you might even feel unfulfilled sometimes. Journaling is a powerful step towards changing that. It has been shown to improve your mood, lower your blood pressure, spark creativity, reduce stress, boost your self-awareness, and even help you sleep better. I've been journaling for most of my adult life and because I know how powerful it is, I created this journal in 2022 specifically for processing my experience in higher ed, but I couldn't keep it to myself. So I'm thrilled to offer this journal to you, which is now available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and Vervante.com. So head over to bit.ly forward slash Dr. Kelly Austin to purchase your paperback or hardcover journal today. You may also access the links in the description box and the show notes. At this very moment, I'm honored to be sharing this time and space with the one and only Miss Shanita Davis. Happy New Year, Shanita. Happy New Year. How are you today? I am wonderful. That is so good. You are my second guest for the Dear Professor series season two, and I'm excited that you decided to share this unique part of the year with me. So how is 2024 treating you so far? 2024 is pretty good so far. (laughs) Okay. Now, last week, my first guest, Tony Jeter and I, we talked about yearly themes and how some people will choose a word a quote, or even a phrase to describe how they want to show up in that year. So like for 2023, her family did a yearly theme and it was um, free to be me in 2023. (laughs) I thought that was so unique. And so I was wondering, are you a person that chooses a yearly theme or do you have some other process for approaching the new year? No, I do not choose a yearly theme, but I do have a word and my word is determined. And I chose determined because I feel that I am pretty much determined um, to do other things than just being a teacher in the classroom. Yes. Okay. so determine my word is fulfilling. So I want to make sure that everything that I do is fulfilling. Right. Because when you've been in education, like you said, you've been you you are so, you know, tuned in to serving other people and wait by way of your students and stuff. And so. Sometimes you don't do the things that you really want to do. 
outside of that teaching experience. So I said, this is my year to really, you know, be fulfilled. So we're going to be determined and fulfilled. How about that? <laughs> That's right. Determined and fulfilled. All right, Shanita. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Shanita Davis. I am a mother of two beautiful children. I have an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son. I am currently a kindergarten teacher. I have been teaching for a total of 12 years. I have um, five years in early childhood education, five years teaching kindergarten, and two years teaching first grade. Um, I attended North Carolina Central University, where I earned my undergrad degree in family consumer science with a concentration in family relationships, uh, relations, not relationships, relations. I also attended Shaw University, where I earned my master's degree in curriculum instruction. I just got accepted into the ECU master's um, school administration program starting next week to be exact next Tuesday. Oh, and well. I'm kind of nervous and excited to start this program. Okay, so let's break this all down. Let's talk about your babies. <laughs> so how are they doing? You know, you have an eight year old. Is she in third grade? She's um in second grade. She has the label. Oh, okay, second grade. That's my favorite grade to teach, Shanita. In the grade, that is my favorite grade. Because, you know, second grade, they're not babyfied, as I would say. <laughs> but they're just like, but they're not too grown yet. You know, they're right there on that little brink, the second grade. Right. Up until about March of second grade when they get ready to turn into third graders. <laughs> you know, but I just love second grade because they're so independent at that time. And your son, is he in preschool or kindergarten? He's in pre-K. He has a late birthday, too. Oh, okay. That's good. The late maintenance. Yeah, they're more mature, though, right? Right. Because I was always the baby because my birthday's in June. So I was always the baby in the class. So how how do they feel about you being a teacher? Do they really know? They know what you do and all of that? And how They yeah. actually do. They actually have the pleasure of me taking them to school. And they actually go. I teach at their school. It's the same school. So we oh, all run a happy family and go to the same school every morning. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Baby, that's good. So you have a master's in curriculum instruction, and so do I. Uh, How did, what made you choose curriculum and instruction? Well, when I first um, went to North Carolina Central University, I well, I always wanted to be a teacher. And um, when I first went to North Carolina Central University, I signed up to be a middle school teacher to teach middle school. But once everything all said and done and I got into the courses, I was like, mm, no, not me. It's not for me. So that's when I switched over and I was like, I think I can handle the babies a little better. Yeah, I was talking about that with Rosa Maria, how middle school, you have to be called, they say, to middle school. That is just a special, you know, time where their hormones are just changing and they're walking into adolescence. So it's a little different. So I can relate to you not wanting to uh, be a middle school teacher. But shout out to all the middle school teachers. No condemnation. We thank you very much <laughs> for your service. All right, Shanita. Um, I know what it's like to thrive in teaching and truly enjoy your students while also knowing that you're called to do more. So how did you conclude that it was time for you to enlarge your realm of impact as an administrator? Well, um, Pretty much my principles that I have had, my principal that I have now and previous principals, um, they pretty much seen in it. And they actually put me on to doing different things like um, leading the um, school leadership team and um, being the chairperson of that. And then um, being a mentor. This year I'm a mentor. And then this year I'm actually the... Um, Lord, my words that went away. Um, event teacher leader roles. I have that role too. So it's just being able to see the difference of just being not just a teacher, but actively being in other roles that I would say, oh, I have had my hands in a little stomach, everything else now. So I feel comfortable enough that I can actually move outside the classroom. Yeah. So have you ever been um, a cooperating teacher, like for a student teacher? 
No. I have oh, not. Okay. okay. So you basically done everything except for that, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, that's awesome. So, Shanita, let me ask you this. Before you before you leave the classroom, let's pretend like you were um, a principal. You're already a principal. And you have given been given some funds to, let's say you're going to have a retreat for brand new teachers, just to brand new teachers, not everybody in the building. What, what are some, some wise tips and some things you might want to share with a brand new teacher yeah, at that retreat? Can you think of just some things you might want them to know? I would say as a brand new teacher, if I put myself in their shoes, is that you have to be consistent um, in the classroom. As they say, start out how you want to hold out. That's <laughs> true. Um, when it comes to the children, you know, that's in school these days is that you have to say what you mean, mean what you say. Um, you can't be this way one day and then that way another day. Not saying that you can't, you know, have fun, have fun, but still have it so that your students know, hey, it's a time to learn and it's a time that we could joke around so that they know you get to know your students. Um build a relationship with your students not only your students your parents that mm -hmm. is one of the masterpieces to building a relationship with your students as well is that you know you build a relationship with your parents too and you have that relationship with your students because anytime the students go home and say oh mommy I love my teacher then you know your parents are on board like oh they really love the teacher the teacher doing a good job so it goes kind of hand in hand so um once again just you know be consistent don't switch up. Always stay consistent and build that relationship with your students and your parents. Yeah, so it's not like you're saying classroom management is still the number one. Yeah. No matter how you can't teach anything till you can manage that classroom. That's correct. Well, right. Have a relationship with the students and their parents. So that's still no matter how how many years, whatever changes, technology. Y'all listen, that classroom management is so important and building relationships is so important. So, Shanita, what's your general experience with taking courses online? I um, started taking online courses in 2015 when I went back to school at Shaw University for my master's degree. Um, pretty much this program was hybrid. So sometimes I would attend in person and then online. Um, I really liked doing both at the time because... I was carrying my first child, which was my daughter, and it worked perfectly for me. Um, I did return back to North Carolina Central in 2019 to get my licensure for birth to kindergarten. And that was fully online, which was also great for me being a mother of two small children at the time. Um, and then pursuing my licensure online was the best choice for me because it really made it easy for me to work full time in the classroom and be at home with my children at night. Okay, so you have an extensive experience. You have graduate level, and then you also have under undergraduate level. So if you had to rate your experience on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being outstanding and 1 being horrific, what rating would you give and why? I would definitely give an 8. I mean, not an 8. I would give a 9. Um, because overall, the experience was very good, being that I am a mother of two children. Um and both times um, carrying, um, being pregnant, and then having to take courses. And not only that, being a full-time teacher as well. It just worked perfect um, at the time. And everything pretty much was smooth sailing and worked out. That was the best way for me at the time. Well, that's a good score. That's our second nine that I've had out of like 15 people. <laughs> so that's a nice high score for distance learning. Now, Shanita, let's talk about your needs as an online student. A need is defined as something you require because it is essential or very important. When you click on the online courses or the courses in which you're enrolled, what do you require or desire from the professor and the course for you to be successful? When I am uh, pretty much taking an online course, I need for my professor to be understanding of my needs. Um, what I mean by that is I am a parent and also a full-time working mother. I mean, teacher and mother, full-time mother and teacher. <laughs> wow. 
I would like for them to understand that the deadlines that are set need to be deadlines that could be met as a full time parent and working teacher. Um, as a student, I would like examples of what the professor is looking for and modeling from the professor. I would also like um, the direction should be explained explicitly for um, great understanding of what is being asked when it is time to complete an assignment. I also need a syllabus. Um, and what I mean, a very detailed syllabus um, that would give me an idea of what when things are due and the weight of different assignments. Um, I will also need for my perfect, well, actually need for the assignments not due close together, um, giving me time to complete an assignment without being pressured to rush to get ready for another assignment. So giving me that time in between to kind of like breathe. <laughs> hey, I just got through this assignment and I don't really have to rush to get to the next assignment. Um, course time, when it comes to the course time, I think the course time should not start later than 7 p.m. and at least end by 8 or 8.30. That gives me time, like I said, going back to me being a mother, um, that gives me time to, you know, still spend time with my children and put my, my babies to bed. Um, this would give me time, like I said, to put my children down for bed and give me a moment to myself before I get myself ready for bed and have to go, you know, to work the next day as well. Um, and the last thing I would say is communication. I would like for my professor to communicate with me. Um, I'm not going to say they have to do like be a lifeline because I know they have other students and courses to teach. But if I email them, I need for them to email me back at least within 24 hours. I think that's more courteous. Um, for being a professor. Shanita, I think this is the best list we have ever had. Do you hear me? <laughs> Not to say the other list weren't good because everybody, you know, has their knee. Right. I mean, this is like a comprehensive, like you hit everything that could be hit. Right. I just absolutely love that. So I'm a, I'm gonna um give them a recap at the end, but thank you so much for being like so thorough with that. Um, so now let me ask you this: since you're gonna be in a master school administration program, and and although you've taken a graduate you know graduate level courses before online, what are you expecting from this online program based on your previous online experience and your teaching experience from these professors? Like I know the things that you you know, that you've listed, but what do you expect, like thinking about an administration program? What do you expect from this program? I expect from this program is to actually put me like more in, like to actually really make them pair me up with my principal, um, kind of like walk in my principal's shoes as much as possible um, mm -hmm. and get more hands on to what, you know, kind of get more hands on to what the principal actually does. I mean, we're talking about like, school leadership team and, you know, leading. And we're talking about numbers funding. I mean, I actually want to experience that and for this program to actually give me the opportunity to walk hand in hand with my principal um, so I can get that experience. Yes. Yeah, so you want more like problems, you know, real life problems to solve. Right. Just like, we're not book sense. Like you're just doing discussion boards and Right. You know, let's do a lot. You know, just writing papers. You want to actually get involved. I actually want to and, and, and see like, hey, this is what they really have to do. Um, and hopefully that's what we actually get to do in this program. We actually get to be in the field or we actually they actually give us something to do in the field to, you know, not just like you said, books or, you know, like right. online courses. Writing papers and, and whatnot. So not unless you look. Okay, so then now that you said that, well, when I take a course, like I'm a bookworm, first of all, like I literally get excited over reading the title of the textbook. I know that's weird, but <laughs> but most importantly, when I see the title of the course, I already like make my judgment like, oh, this is going to be a good class or oh, no. So like, for example, in my PhD program, I took a class called Designing, Training and Performance Solutions and Leading Technology Innovation. So I was excited about that. But then when I took 
funding of educational institutions and quantitative research, I was like, really? Do I have to? You know? <laughs> I was like, it's going to be a, oh, and then when I saw the textbook and it was like a thousand pages with little bitty font, I was like, no. So are you that way? Do you get excited when you see the title of a class or are you just pretty much even keel? Pretty much even, like, I guess until I get into the course, be like, I might look at it, be like, mm, this might be interesting. Then it might be a course that I probably feel is really interesting. I'm like, no, it really wasn't. <laughs> right. It's disappointing. Right. Okay, well, let's play a little game. You up for a little game? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I'm going to give you some titles of some online courses I found in a Master of School Administration program that's online. Okay. And I want you to say intriguing if that title sounds exciting to you or boring if that title sounds dry. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Strategic Leadership for 21st Century Schools. Boring. Okay, well, I'm not going to laugh. <laughs> you said that so emphatically. Okay, here's another one. Micro-political leadership and decision-making within a legal context. Intriguing. Ooh. Okay. Managerial leadership for complex school operations. Intriguing. I don't know. Let me check out the intriguing ones. Let me, let me, hold on. <laughs> Okay, I'm learning a lot about you. Okay, listen to this. Human resource leadership for professional growth. Boring. <laughs> okay. Leadership skill development. I'm kind of me away with that one. Okay, let me go boring. Okay. <laughs> All right, we just had two more. Instructional leadership for teaching and learning. Intriguing. Okay, yeah, because you got that curriculum and stuff in that game. Right. <laughs> and the last one, cultural leadership for systemic school improvement. Intriguing. Okay, well, good. Most of them were intriguing. Okay, so you're not going to be too bored too much if your classes are like those. I <laughs> hope you just don't turn out and be like, I say intriguing, or if my classes are like that, I say intriguing, it turns out to be boring. I know, isn't that disappointing? Right. Oh my goodness, especially, you know, money being spent, you know, it's like, can I get my time and my money back, please? Now, look, it's amazing how you can learn so much from, from people just doing a short activity like that. Right. <laughs> so that is just, um, I don't know, that was just fun to me. So now, Shanita, now let's, let's talk about your pet peeves. Now, a pet peeve is a minor annoyance that an individual finds particularly irritating. It is something that bothers you more than it bothers other people. So it's okay for your pet peeve to be different from somebody else's. Now, when you think about the online courses that you've taken, what has been your pet peeves, Shanita? Oh, the biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve of taking online courses is group work. <laughs> I truly dislike group work on a project that is weighed at a high percentage. Um, group work could either make you or break you. Um, when it comes to group work, you have to learn to work with all kinds of people. And none of us are the same, of course. Um, you have to instantly learn who will pull their weight to get the project done and who you will have to send friendly reminders about getting things done, you know, in a timely manner. Right. Um, this is, it, I would say this is the most nerve wracking part of taking online courses when you are more of a, like, I'm more of a hands-on person. So that's like nerve wracking for me. Um, and a perfectionist. So that gets to me is to have things in on time, having it order. And then I have that one lagging group memory. Yeah. That's the pet peeve for my, um, and I know it has um, been assigned this way, but I truly think it it gives me anxiety to have like group work, all I course group work. Um, each each year I look over the syllabus and if I see a group project, it was like my anxiety went through the roof instantly. Went through the roof, but we got it together. Yeah, so have you found that, okay, let me ask you a few questions about it, because Tony and I talked about this last week, too. So 
Did you find that younger students handle group work different from older students or was it that same across the board? I think it was kind of like, it may, to me, it might have been like half and half. Um, I think it just depends on the person and how, you know, how they like things. Because like I said, my online courses, sometimes I was like the youngest. Sometimes I kind of was like in the middle or kind of on the older end compared to people. I Mm -hmm. think like kind of like, it depends on the person and me being the person that I am, I have OCD, a little OCD. <laughs> and <laughs> So I think that's what gets to me is that like I'm not in front of them and I wow. have to do these online and then I have to work with all different kinds of people. So and then not only that, I haven't been knowing these people long, so I'm just getting to know them. So that means I have to figure out, OK, this is the person that's going to be the lagging person. This is a person that I could call on and, you know, get it done. I think that's where my anxiety really comes in. Yeah. And so how does that connect to or does it connect to your experience? You know, those leadership roles that you had in the actual school. How did how does that do they have anything in common with you, like working with different people and having to get to know them and get things done? Yes. Um, I think what it is is that with me being in different leadership roles within the school, um, actually being like the school leadership chairperson and having to work with pe- people, I mm-hmm. think it's the approach. Um, okay. Because my principal, <laughs> she could say or send out an email and it won't get done. And I can send out an email and my approach and just kind of like, you know, sending out an email is not good enough for me. I actually go to the people and, you know, face to face or have conversations about like, hey, you know, this is what I need. If you need help with it, I'm willing to, you know, help you. So just going that extra mile, um, sometimes being in these leadership roles. Yeah. And so when you're online, the fact that you can't like physically have those kind of person can really kind of ignore you. if They want to. Well, I didn't get your email or. Right. Exactly. They don't, that. they don't respond so that's what makes it kind of you know like verse face to face like yeah okay did you find did you ever have at group activities where it was like you it was just an activity like y'all are doing an activity in a group like during class not something that you had to do like outside of class did you ever experience that yes that we did um activities inside of class with group work yes yeah okay are activities better than group projects or not well, it depends. It depends on what it is um, to me. Okay. okay. Um, you know, it depends on what it is um, and what we are asked to do within that time, you know, because time frame. Yeah, the time frame. Because if it's like a, a project, then, you know, you're going to have a little more time versus an activity. Okay. That's good information. So, because I have just loved and enjoy, I've enjoyed, I'm saying, hearing people's take on their group experience. And so you broke it down really well uh, for me. Now, we've made it to the end, Shanita, where we have to share with the professor. This is called our Dear Professor segment. Um, What's on our heart or what's on your heart? And you're going to share that. You're going to write a note. Basically, I want you to imagine that there's an online bulletin board with sticky notes or messages from students to professors. What's the note you would leave for just one of your online college professors? Okay, um, dear professor, when I had my first online course with you, I knew you were a professor that did not take what you did for granted. You truly love what you were doing. You genu- you genuinely care about your students and the information that they learned from you. Anytime I saw your name on the course that I had to take, I always said, oh, Lord, I, I have her. It wasn't a bad thing. It was a good thing. I knew that I had to be on top of my game. I could not procrastinate. I could not read the night of. And I had to talk during class or get called out. I also knew that everyone would work in group projects because you didn't play about one person doing all the work. You truly shaped me into being a student that wanted to research and learn more. You introduced me to different articles that I have referred back to in some of my other courses and classroom teachers. To be honest, 
I still have my notebook of articles. You have shown me what it looks like to be graceful, to be a graceful leader as a professor. You bought out the fierce fire in me to lead in my teaching world. It made it easy for me to present in front of the entire county, knowing that I would be ready and prepared to speak confidence of what I was explaining. You taught me to be more open to collaborating with others. Dear Professor, I pray that you never stop being yourself. I pray that you continue to lead in the educational world. I pray that you light more torches that come your way. I hope that our relationship continues and never stops. I look forward to us continuing to reach out to each other and you listening to telling and you listening and you telling (laughs) and me telling you about some of the crazy things that I'm going through in the classroom and soon to be school administration program. Thank you for always sending me good scriptures during my times of difficulties. They are always heartfelt and help ease my mind. I pray that the Lord continue to put you at round tables that will bring nothing but respect to your name. Dear Professor, I pray that one day I can be just like you. Shanita, you're going to make me cry. Do you hear me? That was just so beautiful. Like, I'm speechless. <laughs> Like, I have chill bumps, like, literally. I was like, anyway, let me just, hold on. Hold on, everyone. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Let me come on back. All right, so, Shanita, I know that professor is going to be real to to go to that bulletin board and see those that know like for the rest of okay now what i'm gonna do now is try to attempt to to share my takeaways from today's conversation like that was just uh anyway okay so shanita when you're taking classes online you need number one um your professor to understand your needs you need those um um make sure that the deadlines can be met especially for students who are working and also parents and have, you know, just a lot of other things going on. Number two, you need examples of what the professor is um, looking for. You need the professor to model what they're looking for. You need explicit instructions, a detailed syllabus, and you need the pacing of assignments to be reasonable. You don't want to end one assignment and then have to jump right into another. So there should be some reasonable space in between those assignments. Um, Number seven for course time. If you have to have a synchronous class, it shouldn't start any later than seven and it needs to end by eight or eight thirty. And last but not least, you want there to be timely communication that your professor should get back with you within 24 hours. Was that accurate? How'd I do? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Oh, that was so good. And Shanita, I just want to thank you so much for being my second guest. And you are also my first guest who is soon to be a school administrator because we already speaking that into existence. Yes, yes. So you are so perceptive and self-aware. So listening to you share your experiences was a supreme delight. You even tried to make me cry on rock. On this podcast, I'm going to listen to this a hundred times, okay? I am grateful that you are taking your passion for education into the leadership realm because we need individuals who truly understand the plight of today's teachers and who have also been successful in helping students obtain positive outcomes, as I know that you have. I pray that your graduate studies are fulfilling and that nothing distracts or deters you from becoming the dynamic administrator that you have been called to be. Yay! (laughs) We want to thank you all for joining us. Remember to comment, like, share this series with three people this week. Follow on the podcast platform of your choice and subscribe on YouTube. 
I look forward to spending time with you next week on the Dear Professor series, where college students who take courses online speak their minds. Bye-bye.